What is going on, everybody? We're back on it. Hunter Hunter Manga Chapter 350. I hope this is recording because I tried to start this about five times and it says it wasn't able to record. So if you're seeing this, fingers crossed it goes up. But uh, we did it. We got 100 likes in like 30 hours on the last video. So you guys will get two chapters this week. Um, Patreon members, I think you guys should be getting this. You should be seeing 350 on Monday um, and then probably 351 on Wednesday. And then YouTube, you guys should be seeing this on Friday, and then chapter 351 will be up tomorrow. Um, and if we can do the same thing, again, if we can get 100 likes on this video that you're watching right now, if we can get 100 likes on this video and tomorrow's video, so those two back-to-back, -back, so watch this one, like it, watch tomorrow's, like it. If both of them get 100 by Wednesday, I'll um, have 352 and 353 up next week, Friday, Saturday. So we'll just try to keep that trend going. Uh, we also put the Attack on Titan trailer, so that's up as well if you haven't seen that. We'll just go ahead and dive on into this. You guys gave me some clarification that um, the princes are pretty much able to just bring whoever, and they're not getting vetted or background checked. It's just, hey, they are you know they can just bring whoever they want. Um, that just seems like it's going to spell trouble to me. Um, we got clarification that I knew this wasn't Karapika's like, face and that silhouette that we saw. It just looked oddly familiar to me when we saw the print sitting there with the Kurta eyes and all that kind of stuff. And then I got clarification on like the urn and like every single one of them. Every single one of the princes has an end beast and just how overpowerly and how overpowered and strong they might be. There's just a lot. I'm just hearing that there's a lot of information as far as like the power scale is about to take a huge jump and we can have discussions on the prince or I, I'm saying the prince cause it's kind of one, the main one that we've kind of been keeping up with in his power and just what it might actually be. But, um, let's go ahead and get into it. Chapter 350 titled Prince. Just so you guys know, it, I'm seeing all of the text bubbles. If it's cut off a little bit, I just want to make sure that you guys can see it at a decent rate. So, um, yeah, I'm not missing anything. See you next volume, next volume. That means the next, that doesn't mean next chapter does it. Um, doesn't matter. She's there. All right, let's get it. The six princes hiring bodyguards are giving preferences to hunters. To apply, pro hunters must enter their hunter association registration number, so multiple applications are disqualified. Yeah, so you can't spam it. Hold on, let me move this a little bit. What if they hide their identity? The valuation goes down. They'd be assigned far from the prince's personal details. The possibility that our target is among the six princes isn't zero. Even if he's not there, it's still our best option for getting close to him. Oh, damn. Look at the squad here. Is this Bisky down here? We got Melody. Is this supposed to be Hanzo? Basho? Is this Karapika's old Nen master here? Uh... Basho, is that Hanzo? If that is Hanzo, he looks so much better animated than in the manga. Uh, and I think that's Karapika's old master. We'll see. Is that Bisky? Maybe. I need each of you to infiltrate a prince's security detail. Um, and then I'm just thinking from like the prince's side. Like If I can bring whoever I want, why am I going to take the chance of the Hunter Association letting somebody close to me keep tabs on me i guess it kind of depends what kind of prince you are if you're one of the if you're one of those young kids and you don't have any malicious intent nor do you really have any kind of goons or bodyguards or thugs that can kind of you know do the do any kind of the dirty work if you're literally just a kid and you're like hey all of us have to go on this i don't really know much about what needs to be done um hiring a hunter as my bodyguard seems good that makes a reliable, you know, explanation. But why would um, the 14th Prince, whatever his name is, and then the other guy that has Uvo resemblances, if whatever their intent might be, why would they want the Hunter Association, like, snooping around? I don't see why they would even attempt to hire any of them. But, you know, we'll see. Oh, uh, to apply, Hunters must enter their Hunter Association registration number. Yeah, the six princes are high in body and giving preference to Hunter. So I'm, I'd be interested to see who these six are that are giving preferences um, to Hunters. But yeah, I think this is Basho, Hanzo, Karapika's teacher, Melody. Bisky. A job posting one month before the scheduled departure is rather late, 
and all six were put up at once. I don't think the target number four is among them. I agree. Only amateurs use money as a reward. Oh, I guess I should have read all this. It's obvious something happened that led to this situation. Is Zunavi? Yeah, I don't even know if we ever got his name. But yeah, it says Mentor, so... We never even got to see the full extent of what his power actually was. Number one and number four have the same mother. And this is old hat for them. And this old hat for them. They must have trusted a private military. Hanzo, colleague, yep. The younger wives with less experience. Yeah, 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 okay. That's what I kind of figured. Maybe if, if it's just straight up innocent princes, then maybe they would enlist hunter help. I think that's convenient for us. We'll be able to win them over win their trust, and we'll be able to get close to their other princes. Melody. No, if this has to do with the succession controversy, it spells trouble. Biscuit, hired through Kahlua. Oh, I was about to say, because what is their... Biscuit coming into this seems not odd. I mean, she is a hunter, but has no relationship to any of these that we've seen in the story. I really... Don't like Hanzo's <laughs> design there. Um, all I want is information that will get me as close to the fourth prince as possible. The fourth. I don't know why I said 14th, the fourth. I'll leave the rest up to your individual discretion. So we'll kind of see. I mean, it's easy for Karapika to call up Kilo and be like, hey, any hunters you recommend? Anybody you've worked with? Any, you know, um, assassins out there that are hunters that might want to? So, you know. Because we just never we just never saw Biscuit and Rapika interact. How close exactly? Ideally, physical contact. I'll have more. I'll have more abilities I could use, and with higher accuracy. In fact, if I manage to shake, we don't even have how to know how to pronounce his name. Terras Ter or Serenich Serenich. I don't know. Hand. On the eve of departure, you can abort boarding the ship altogether. Oh, because she'll be able to, yeah, or he'll be able to kind of, you know, get all that information. Hold on, by abort, you mean the security detail and not your job, right? Your contract is in effect once we've applied to the offers. I'll want my payment regardless. That's fine, of course. I'd think confirming that would be unnecessary with normal comprehension skills. Oh, God. Oh, is Biscuit giving Karapika? Yeah, all right, yeah. I feel like Karapika, just everybody's like a yes man around Karapika, so I would actually like to see somebody give him some snapback. I don't know who you think you are, but I don't trust you, says the person overreacting, the innocent in our first meeting. You'll probably end up fighting with Biscuit, so I'll tell you the secret to getting her to eat out of your hand. I couldn't get myself to do it. It'll be creepy, but you should try it if you can. To get my people back. I would never have hired such a delicate flower of a girl like you without Kilua's recommendation. Yeah, You're more suited to sitting pretty as a princess than being a bodyguard. You should pull out while you still can. <laughs> I'll do anything it takes. Are you ready? Yes, I'll do anything. Then send your data to the to your designated client. The clients are the children of the king's more recently added wives. That's what I kind of figured. So maybe we kind of pieced that together before. Because if I'm a Serenedic or whatever the fluff his name is. And I know that you guys have said that we don't even know how to pronounce his name. Because nobody's ever like heard it spoken. Serenich? I don't know. We'll just call my man T. <laughs> Again, like why somebody, if whatever his motives are, he doesn't need the Hunter Association being next to him, even though Karapika is going to try. There are some in more complicated positions. Naturally, there must be circumstances we know nothing about. All six posts have practically the same content, but if there's a possibility of getting what I want, I have to deduce which is which from the minute differences. The first post or the last, the one with the highest pay. Or the one that never tried to one-up the other in pay. The one that gave up quickly. The one with a lot of amendments. The one with none. The one that specifies the review process. The opaque one. Interview required or not, etc. The closest I can get to the target. 
It's probably one of these. I mean, yeah, you figure maybe the princes are going to be maybe congregating with each other, or at least maybe be quartered in the same area of the ship, so, I mean, this is a good start. If they say the prince will personally conduct the interview, this shows maturity and confidence. There are two of those. One has the highest pay as a result of the one-upping competition, and the other never changed. The one who won and pays the most is competitive and likes to display his power. The one who never changed has strong self-esteem and self-control and asks the same from others. Prince Halkenberg is the one who fits the profile the most. I'm convinced one of these is him. All right. Oh, here we go. I guess we're getting background on the man. He was accepted to Mywell University. Is that supposed to be like a Harvard or something? The world's best. At 15, he majored in physics and won the silver medal in the Archery World Championships. He has the best qualities among the princes, but he's made public that he had the misfortune of never getting along with his mother or his two sisters. He openly criticizes the royals, and the king hasn't been able to control him. Entering boarding school in the middle of the elementary grades was rumored to be his egg was rumored to be his exile as well as an escape from assassination. As he's noted on his own Facebook, oh, Facebox, <laughs> Facebox page, that uh, T is the one prince he accepts. The only one who could empathize with all the disconnect and alienation. They must have kept contact while they were apart and likely will reunite on the ship. Well, this is the one you've got to apply for. Yeah. The other can be surmised to be number six. Or number 10 from the profiles, it's known that both pick their guards on looks and they're very proud judging from their sin, judging from their statements, though these are weak reasons to personally conduct interviews. Well, Halkenberg, that's our man. But their connections to T are weak, so I must pick Halkenberg. All right, Halkenberg it is. And if you could have the rest of them get accepted, which for story purposes, it would make sense if all of them get one of the six that applied for the hunters or the hunter preferences. Just so you know, if shit was to hit the fan, Karapika would have allies, hopefully in the same area or quarters. I mean, the ship is going to be huge, so if they could be somewhat close to each other. The others are sent. Only you and I are left, so I'll take the one you don't. I'll go with my first instincts. Halkenberg is strict with himself and others. It has to be this one. Okay, so I'm this one. I got a response already. Meet at uh, the hotel at 7 p.m. Me too. There's a briefing session. Me as well, but a different place. It's another hotel that the Hugo Rowe manages. Let me know if you get any clues. If the clients require non-disclosure, we'll use Q. We'll use Q as planned. Got it. Okay, let me see what this uh, start thing is here. By sending a nine-digit code to a phone company held by the Hunter Association, you can send and receive information via special software called Q. There are no logs and no call history, and regular wiretapping systems cannot detect this method. That's helpful. I'm sure there's a NEN ability that could kind of refute that, but um, see, getting some images here of them kind of uh, of Karapik on the on the lowdown. There he is. The prince awaits inside. I thought this was Hulkenberg right here. But no. Okay. Alright. The silhouette doesn't look anything like what the guy, um... Looked like here. Let's see what that plays out to be. Did I pass it? Uh... God. <laughs> Literally picked the worst option. The absolute worst option possible. On paper, at least. Um, this kid isn't going to be shaking any hands or going into any meetings or flipping, you know, meeting up with T in the middle of the night or any of the other brothers. You know, you're not going to be able to spy on. Literally, this kid probably can't even speak or eat or do anything by himself. Oh, God. Way to fluff that up. Hello, this is Wobble, and I am Oito? Wobble. Oh, God. Way to go. 
My name is Karapika. You look disappointed. No, no, not at all. I mean, hey, you gotta take it. Hopefully one of the others got it. It's alright. It means you're more likely to be someone we want. But how? We want someone who surmised that our post was from... Oh. So they're kind of on the same wavelength here. Someone who can reach their goal with few clues. We weren't permitted to write anything that specified which prince might be hiring. The only change allowed was the fee, and the descriptions had to be picked from the pre-selected options. Because if our identities could be specified, an assassination, an assassin could infiltrate, and the popular princes would have been flooded with response. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Both applied to Prince Halkenberg. He figured as much and did not put up. Oh, wow. Halkenberg didn't even. Mm. Damn, got his ass. Prince Halkenberg is very strict with himself and others. The rules didn't allow it, but someone who knows him and pretended to be him set the fee at zero. He wants to change the royal family politics. There are followers both within and without the system slowly garnering power. There are never-ending rumors of assassination plots and some followers scheme to use him to form a dictatorship. Ah, uh, that's disappointing that he, that we didn't even, <laughs> I mean, literally it's the worst option. Most who get close without going through his organization's background checks are assassins or fake followers. But that would be convenient for us we would have a give and take relationship. Those after his life will get to wait for their chance while protecting us. Yeah. I mean, Karapika, if you're looking at it from their point of view, again, Karapika could be somebody that wants to assassinate him and, you know, you might get your chance, you know, protecting them. Cause you figure maybe the Royal family is going to, like I said, stay around each other, maybe attend some kind of meetings and briefings while on the ship. So you might get your chance. Those plotting to manipulate him can learn his weaknesses. What do you mean? Yeah, why is she over here giving so much uh, info? You could have just, like, said, oh, you thought this was us, but she's really, like, I don't understand what's wrong with re regular applicants. Pros will do their jobs, even just for the money. They should be more reliable than those with ulterior motives. Not in this case. Pro guards specialize in protecting dignitaries, but are not trained in proactively killing someone. You mean to eliminate threats. Yeah, unless you're on a, like, a Lumi or Kilua, like, Hunter. But yeah, like, pro guards. Now, when, now, when she says pro guards, is that referring to pro hunters? Or just guards in general? But are not trained to practice killing someone, you mean to eliminate threats. This voyage is a killing spree until only one prince remains. Oh, God. And the fact that, because you guys let me, you guys let me know this in the comment section, the fact that all of them are going, like you figure this mother wants to protect Wobble or whatever, and if going, and of course she probably wants her son to become king, you know, um, but knowing what she just said, this voyage is a killing spree until only one prince remains alive. The care for her child would probably supersede the wants of her of her wanting Wobble to take the throne. And you figure she would just concede that, be like, hey, me and Wobble are out. We're not going. Not worth it. I don't want my child killed. And it's not like she's some kind of, I mean, maybe we don't know, but it's not like she's some kind of like chimera aunt uh, bodyguard pro zodiac type level and power to where she could protect her kid and herself at the same time but even then that's risky um, but you guys let me know that all of the princes have to go or are going so yeah it's going to be a rough rough time this voyage is a killing spree until one prince remains alive now what she means by pro guard specialize in protecting dignitaries that's just regular bodyguards I'm getting but she thinks maybe hunters can maybe kill but then is Karapika willing to, I mean, I'm sure, but is Karapika, Melody, Basho, some of the others, are they going to be down with, you know, 
proactively taking someone out that might be coming to take out their client. Uh, hmm, we'll see. Need to scoot this over. The higher ranking princes who have power and wealth have personal armies and are well prepared for the, yeah, that's pretty much what we said. They have no interest in hiring any random dando pro hunter. They probably already got their goons and their squad. Didn't anyone oppose or refuse this? Surely you must have. I would get out of it if I could. King Hugo Rue requires his wives and children to conduct themselves as is worthy of royal blood. The wife's role is to raise the king's child with the unwavering belief that they will one day be king. That's what a king's child is. They think it's a matter of course that there will be an opportunity to be king and that the throne will be theirs and that such an opportunity should never be renounced. The king instilled in them that anyone raised to believe otherwise would not be his child. I mean, yeah, so they're all going for this. This is just going to be an absolute shit show. It's not hard to imagine the fate of deserters. I mean, they probably get hunted down. For those in the weakest positions, Prince Halkenberg is our solution. When he becomes the next king, if this succession battle becomes public, he will be the one to suffer the most damage. Our only hope is to buy our safety by blackmailing him with his participation in this very battle. I, I don't know why you're here. But if you accept the job, we will give ten times the promised pay if you can get us off the ship alive. <sighs> if you leave now, we will, stay, we will still pay you the promised fee if you keep this converse, conversation confidential. Hold on, I need to read that again right there. So is she with? Is she for Halkenberg or not? For those in the weakened position, which is herself, Prince Halkenberg is our only solution. When he becomes the next king, if this succession plans become public he will be one to suffer the most damage when he becomes the next king. There's no guarantee he becomes the next king, even with the groundswell uproar support that he has. We know how this succession plan goes. So I don't know why she didn't say if he becomes the next king. And if the way he became king becomes public, he will be the one to suffer the most damage. Maybe that's, you know, I don't know. We'll kind of see. I can't force you into this. I'm not in either position you described, but if you'll agree to my conditions, I promise to you I promise to protect you to the best of my abilities. He's down. Losing what he wanted, but he's down. Alright, I'll try. Did we miss what the conditions were? There are other passengers, so they won't be killing each other in the open. Yeah, there's gonna be some John Wick like I'm trying to snipe you under my jacket type shit. <laughs> they will feign normalcy and attend dinners and parties with other VIPs. There should be opportunities to pass by each other. But as you know, though we are officially equals, there is a strict hierarchy between the wives. The same goes for the princes, and it will be difficult to breach protocol. I'm well aware of it. I'll avoid anything that jeopardizes your safety. Is this the wife flashback here? I was foolish. I came from poverty. What? She thought she had a chance with the king, so... Or what? When the king became enamored with me, I was obsessed with being... Yeah. I figured. What I wanted and dreamed about was, at the time, a sordid life of luxury and fame. But once Wobble was born and I learned her fate... Oh, it's a girl. I regretted it all. I finally realized what really matters. Would you like to hold her? I didn't even know it was a girl. I'm going to be honest with you there, Chief. That's a nice shot right here. Number six, Tyson. Biscuit. <laughs> Number 13, Maram. Marayam. Basho with number seven, Laruzu. Lazurus. Melody with number 10, Kacho. Hanzo with number 12, Momozi. Momozi. That's end, and that's the end of the chapter. Um, but yeah, we kind of knew. I mean, we didn't know how deep it went and kind of the specifics, but I feel like we could kind of surmise and kind of piece together that this was kind of what was going to happen. I thought it was going to be more of, hey, you guys need to survive and come back. Like, I need you to adventure through the dark continent, and if you survive and come back, 
Which still could be the case. I mean, just because you pluck all of... There's 14 or whatever. Say six of them get killed on the voyage there. I don't know what their... I don't know what any of the prince's motives are beyond wanting to become king. So who's to say that they even get off the ship like once it gets there? Maybe some choose... Like if I'm the last surviving prince, I'm not going to take the chance of stepping foot on the dark continent where the like survival rate is slim to none. I'm going to sit my ass on that ship. Whoever comes back, I'm hoping that they'll leave some kind of like ship commander or captain. Um, he doesn't need to go out there either. Y'all don't come back in the X amount of days allowed or whatever. Me and the captain are turning this shit around. And we're go it's not like you're sitting on some like little dingy two-seater canoe. Like you're on a huge like continent-sized ship. There'll be plenty to keep you occupied in the time it takes any of the survivors to come back. But like, yeah, I wouldn't, unless T or some of the others actually have wants and desires and curiosity on what's on the dark continent. I'm just there to pluck off as many bodies as I could. Um, now I'm going to say that maybe some of them do have interest on what might be over there. Just because you pluck off like five or six on the journey over there, you take your ass off that ship. Um, there's no guarantee you even come back as well, but I kind of pieced together that, they were going to be taking each other out. I thought it was going to be maybe who can survive the Dark Continent, but it's more like, damn, who can survive even the trip to the Dark Continent? Uh, I thought the Biscuit stuff was pretty great. Um, I would have loved to have seen like it animated where Karapika's like doesn't have many options, you know, of like who he might be able to trust. He knows Gone is not an option. Um... And you know what's so weird is, like, we didn't see Karapika in any of that election arc stuff. Like, they literally brought back every single person we came across. We saw Wing, we saw Biscuit, uh, you know, Leorio even makes an appearance, but we didn't see Karapika. But either way, um, I would have liked to have seen this animated to where Karapika's like, I don't have any options. You know, he's not going to enlist and he's Soaker or something like that. But he makes a phone call to Kilo. He's like, hey, you have anybody? And Kilo was like, I might, I'll, you know, I'll see you in two days time or whatever. And he shows up to the Hunter Association with Biscuit or wherever they're at. And I could just see the back and forth between the three of them going on. It'd be pretty great animated. Um, but yeah, all this stuff was great. And yeah, Halkenberg is who I thought we were going for. It sounded a little too easy on paper, but I thought that was maybe how it was going to go. You know, Halkenberg meets maybe secretly with T and Karapika is there for like all the information, all the smoke, all the knowledge. And literally, as far as rankings go, there's probably not a worse option Karapika could have gotten as far as, like, because Wobble isn't going to any meetings. He's not going to be meeting with T or Halkenberg in the middle of the night or really kind of, you know, sending out assassins. I don't even know if she's, like, is the wife going to enlist, like, Karapika? Like, hey, I know they're, I know this prince is after us specifically hard. I want you to kill them. Or is this woman just straight, like, just please, just play defense, just please, just just protect us the entire time. I don't want you to go out there and try to kill anybody. I just need you to make sure we don't get killed. Um, because, man, you figure this is going to be easy picking, so maybe everybody just sends somebody at them just to get rid of the the, the little one first. Um, but yeah, the Halkenberg stuff was interesting. I kind of got hung up on this passage here. For those in the weakest position, the Prince Halken Halkenberg is our only solution. Um, which sounds accurate because of the background that we kind of saw how he like didn't agree with kind of the the succession plan. He's always been kind of against it and, you know, his kind of background growing up. Um, but when he becomes the next king, she made it seem like it was already going to be known. There's With this going on, Wobble could become king. Like, there's no, you know, you don't know. If the succession battle becomes public he will be the one to suffer the most damage. I wonder why that is. Is it because he's the most popular that people see in the public eye? That um, if this information got out and he was to be chosen, because any of them could become king and this information could get out, I don't think it would really change. Our only hope is to buy our safety by blackmailing him with his participation in this very battle. Now, blackmailing who? Blackmailing the actual current king? Or who are we really speaking here? Our only hope is to buy our safety by blackmailing him with his participation in this very battle. 
Or does she want to take out Halkenberg? Hmm. Because this makes it sound like she's against it. But this first statement here, for those in the weakest position, Prince Halkenberg is our only solution. Meaning, I'm thinking she's talking about her self and Wobble. They're currently in the weakest position of the 14, I think. When he becomes the next king, if the succession battle becomes public, he will be the one to suffer the most damage. Our only hope is to buy our own safety by blackmailing him with his part participation in this very battle. So yeah, I'm kind of hung up on this passage here. Like, does she believe Halkenberg is their only hope? But at the same time, she's kind of sounding like she's convinced that he is going to be become the next king. But if or when he does become the next king, she wants to try to blackmail him with the participation in, you know, this kind of um, last man standing king of the hill type survival thing, you know? So we'll kind of have to see how it plays out. But that's pretty much the majority of the episode there, what we got to play out. And Karapika says he's down and they're going to pay 10 times the amount. I thought this was a great shot right here. The shady, I mean, it just looks great. Probably one of the better shots I've seen so far in the, all the chapters I've been reading. And uh, the squad is down. I'm really un, not a fan of Hanzo's, maybe because I saw him animated first, but he like, <laughs> he had size to him and, you know, just kind of a different look. And this look just like, I like the Hanzo character design. And this look up here, just he just looks weak. And, you know, this here and especially the full body shot. Um... Yeah, you know, because, like, in the anime, he's as big as Basho, maybe not height-wise, but, like, girth and muscle, and here, they I don't, I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but, yeah, we'll leave it there. This is going to go up on Friday, guys. Get this video to 100 likes and tomorrow's video at 100 likes. Both should, this should be up at 12 o'clock on Friday. Uh, 3.51 will be up on 12 o'clock on Saturday. Um, if we can get 100 likes on both, we'll keep spitting out two next week, and we'll keep up the momentum um, with that. So, like, share favorite, subscribe, and as always,